Same sex marriage is just the latest civil rights battle of the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender or LGBT community here in the United States. And although the outcome of the fight for marriage equality is still unknown, the LGBT rights movement achieved a triumph when the U.S. military repealed its don't ask, don't tell policy in the fall of 2011, a policy that forbade homosexual service members from serving openly in the military. So if an institution as traditional as the military can evolve to be more accepting of homosexuality, is there hope for change within the rest of American civil society? Joining me now to offer his insight is Daniel Troy, a former U.S. Army lieutenant who was at the forefront of the fight to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Lieutenant, thanks so much for coming in. Great to be with you. For our international audience who may not have a total handle on this, how would you describe this policy and what kind of impact did it have on you? Well, it's quite an honor to be able to speak to that international audience. America is a place made of so many people. If you're watching this on TV, you probably know that I'm Asian. And my parents immigrated here in this country from Korea. All they said to me was, we came here to give you guys a better shot at life, the future generations. And so when I talk about don't ask, don't tell, repeal, or when I talk about equal rights. It comes from a much deeper place. It comes to the very idea of who belongs in this country? Who belongs in this human fabric? And you don't have to be from America to understand that. You either exclude people from your country, you love them and acknowledge their love, or you don't. There's very little middle ground. This is a civil rights battle and I'm so honored to be part of it to honor my father and my mother. How was it, though, for you and, and other gays uh, in the military? Was you constantly looking over your shoulder? Mm -hmm. I mean, what was it like? It's not easy. It's not easy when, when your country that you just want to serve makes you prove your human dignity. And I could talk about free speech, or I could talk about identity speech. I could say that it was unconstitutional but for me I didn't know any of those words what they meant I just knew that if I said I'm gay if I told the truth if I followed the honor code if I had that shred of integrity then I'd be fired and booted and I'd not only be able to, I wouldn't be able to go home because now I'd be outed to my parents I wasn't so afraid of don't ask don't tell I was afraid of Reverend Choi he's a Southern Baptist minister and so for a lot of soldiers who did get fired because they told the truth, because they gained a little bit of courage, that's upsetting me because a lot of them committed suicide. Unfortunately, a lot of people do commit suicide because all they were told from the very first day of their, their being in the military was, you better tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth, then you'll kill your soldiers in war. So why is it now, under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, why was it then that Straight people could tell the truth, they could follow the honor code, but gay people couldn't. It didn't make any sense. And, and the reality is, with all civil rights, when you allow people to access truth and say it without shame, you help the entire unit, the, the team, the family, the country. Well, let's talk about uh, helping the unit, uh, because a lot of people said, I mean, there were people who were very much opposed to repealing this. They said morale, cohesion, retention, it's all going to be they were wrong, because, And they were wrong. Uh, there's been a study that's basically zero change. Um, did that surprise you in any way, or did you know that your colleagues would be accepting? <laughs> Just, I laugh when people say they, they, they used so much uh, slippery slope and hyperbole. They said we would need a draft because everybody's going to quit. <laughs> and that is the greatest insult you could slap a soldier in the face with is to say, you know what? You're not professional enough. If somebody tells you the truth, then you're just going to quit your mission. And if you tell anybody that on your team, for instance, if you told your cameraman that right now, that said, I bet you're going to give up, huh? I bet you're going to give up. That's how you betray your team. And a lot of people, when they said that, I, I, I felt betrayed on behalf of straight people. 
I said, I know that not all straight people are anti-gay. And when you assume that of our great military men and women who are willing to die for their country, I got offended for them. Not so much for gay people, but I say, you're hurting all of us. And you're hurting your own national security. Well, you came out when this policy was still in effect. You were kicked out of the military. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you went to West Point. It's something that you care deeply about. Did you ever regret it at any point? Because it must have been tough. I'll be honest. I sometimes wonder why I put myself through all of this. But because I've finally learned after fighting in war and telling people to kill other people, when I came back home, I understood finally what love means. I would never regret that. And if, and if you want to criticize me for the rest of my life, if a judge wants to give me a life sentence for falling in love, then so be it because I'm going to love until the day I die. I understand what that means now. And all the things that I fought for, love is worth fighting for. I believe that. So I don't regret it, not one bit. Lieutenant Daniel Choi, thank you so much for coming on The Heat. Thank you. I'm honored.